Hello there, health enthusiasts. Hello and welcome to another episode. So, before we get into the actual treatment for erectile dysfunction with these medications, we must first understand how erections occur. If you have not already, please like, comment, and subscribe. When a person becomes sexually aroused as a result of physical or psychological stimulation, an erection occurs. This causes the brain to send signals to the nerves in the penis, resulting in the release of nitric oxide and the production of CGMP, or cyclic guanosine monophosphate. CGMP relaxes and widens blood vessels, allowing more blood to flow in. The penis becomes firm and erect as it fills with blood. What then stops the erection? Three major things happen. First, nitric oxide or the stimulus disappears. Second, the chemical messenger CGMP degrades or breaks down. Finally, your body has a nervous response to ejaculation, so when you ejaculate, your nervous system revs up and causes the smooth muscle to contract, forcing blood out of the penis and into the rest of your body, causing the penis to be flaccid. So, all of these erectile dysfunction medications work by preventing the breakdown of that chemical messenger, CGMP, by inhibiting the enzyme phosphodiesterase type 5, PDE5. Before we get into the differences between sildenafil and tadalafil, it is important to be aware of the potential side effects of these medications. Remember that these side effects will not affect everyone, and for many people, the benefits of improved erectile function outweigh the risks of side effects. Consult your healthcare provider if you experience severe or long-lasting side effects. Tadalafil side effects are similar to sildenafil and may include headaches, facial flushing, upset stomachs, nasal congestion, back pain, and occasionally vision changes. Also, there is one medication you are taking that you must not take, and that is nitrates or medication containing nitrates. Nitroglycerin is commonly prescribed for people suffering from chest pain or angina. It is a pill that is given to you to take and place under your tongue if you have persistent chest pain. If you are taking this medication, you should not use it for erectile dysfunction because it can cause your blood pressure to drop to dangerously low levels, putting you at risk of death. Furthermore, certain medications cause drug-drug interactions. People with kidney or liver disease would need to consult their doctor about dose adjustments. Priapism is a very uncommon side effect of these medications. Priapism is defined as an erection that lasts longer than four hours, which is undesirable. This is what happens. It damages tissues in the penis and, if left untreated, can cause irreversible damage. Do not be alarmed. Unless someone overdoses on these medications, this rarely occurs when taking this medication at the appropriate prescribed dose. Hearing loss is another uncommon side effect that has been reported. What is sildenafil, and how should I take it? Both of these medications have a success rate of 60 to 80 percent. And in terms of efficacy, they are roughly equivalent. Why am I talking about sildenafil and tadalafil? Because they work and have well-researched reports to back up their claims. Furthermore, they are less expensive than other erectile dysfunction medications. Sildenafil's development as an erectile dysfunction ed, medication is an intriguing story that combines serendipity, scientific research, and a dash of luck. Pfizer, a pharmaceutical company, was researching a compound called sildenafil in the 1980s. Sildenafil was initially investigated as a potential treatment for angina pectoris, a heart condition characterized by chest pain caused by insufficient blood flow to the heart. During angina clinical trials, researchers discovered an unexpected side effect. While taking sildenafil, male participants reported improved erections. This was a notable and unexpected discovery. Pfizer shifted its research focus after recognizing the potential of sildenafil as an ED treatment. The company saw an opportunity to create a medication that could help millions of men suffering from ED all over the world. So that's how sildenafil came about. Sildenafil is the oldest available medication for erectile dysfunction, so it has the longest data on its efficacy and its use. Sildenafil, Viagra, should be taken anywhere between 30 minutes and 4 hours before sexual intercourse, on an empty stomach, or with food. Avoid eating high-fat foods before taking Viagra because they reduce the medication's efficacy. As a result, you should take it on an empty stomach or with a light meal. It remains in the bloodstream for approximately 4 hours. It is available in a variety of doses ranging from 25 mg to 100 mg. It is only offered in on-demand dosing, which means you can only take it before sexual intercourse. It can't be taken as a daily dose. The side effects that are unique to Viagra are that sometimes people who take Viagra tend to experience blue-green discoloration or changes in their color vision. 
If that happens, kindly stop taking the medication right away and consult your doctor. Another side effect we sometimes see with Viagra and Tadalafil is nosebleeds, although this occurs in a small percentage of people. What exactly is Tadalafil, and how should I use it? Tadalafil is a more selective phosphodiesterase enzyme inhibitor, which means it inhibits erection-inducing enzymes more selectively. It is important to take it about 30 minutes to an hour before sexual intercourse, just like sildenafil, but you can take it on an empty stomach. It can stay in the bloodstream for up to 36 hours, so if you plan on having multiple episodes over the weekend, this is the medication to use. It is also available in a low dose that can be taken daily, which some people prefer due to the spontaneity associated with the frequency. So they can have intercourse whenever they like. On-demand dosing ranges between 5 and 20 milligrams. The fact that they have different dosages does not imply that one is superior, they are simply different. Another interesting fact about the low daily dose is that it is useful for men with benign prostatic hyperplasia, BPH. It aids men experiencing urinary symptoms associated with BPH, such as difficulty emptying the bladder, straining, and waking up in the middle of the night to urinate. Tadalafil is a medication for people who have BPH and erectile dysfunction. Finally, some evidence suggests that men with complete erectile dysfunction and no erections may benefit more from Tadalafil than other medications. So, which is best for you? Let me share some findings from a meta-analysis of sildenafil and tadalafil. The purpose of this meta-analysis was to evaluate the efficacy and safety of these two medications. The findings revealed that tadalafil and sildenafil had comparable efficacy and adverse event rates. Tadalafil, on the other hand, significantly increased patients' sexual confidence. The study concluded that Tadalafil has a similar efficacy and safety profile to Sildenafil but may be more effective in increasing patients' sexual confidence. So, what do I recommend? For people with BPH and urinary symptoms, I recommend one daily dose of Tadalafil. If you must take an on-demand medication, try either of them first, and if one does not work, switch to the other, but always do so under the supervision of a physician. If you found this video useful, Please like, share, and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. As we near the end of our journey, keep in mind that the road to health is not paved with shortcuts or quick fixes. It's about making informed choices, staying curious, and, above all, listening to your body.